Uh, as I said, I'm John Yonke. I'm CEO of Tackle. This is our inaugural cloud go-to-market experience event. And at Tackle, our platform and team exists to help all software companies sell via the cloud marketplaces. We spent the last five years iterating on how to build a cloud go-to-market, working with hundreds of software companies which puts us in a really unique position to observe and partner with software companies as they think about how selling is changing. And we work with seed stage startups up to some of the largest software companies in the world. And I'm really excited to be here today to talk to you about how B2B software sales is going digital. So we are in the golden age of software and we're consuming more software every day than ever before in our consumer lives and our business lives. And I think if you think about the number of apps you interact daily, you know, both on your phone and in business, uh, it's it, it was a single digit answer 10 years ago, but today it's likely measured in tens to hundreds and growing by the month. Every human's expectations around digital experiences have evolved and bad software and customer experiences used to be tolerated where today consumers and business people alike have really high expectations for seamless digital experiences in all interactions. And I know the markets and especially Twitter sentiment right now might not feel this way, but honestly, there is no better time to be in software. So this chart highlights why. Uh, so more software companies are being born than ever before. Forrester said uh, in 2020, there were 250,000 software companies, and that number will grow to roughly a million by 2027. So what's fueling this? You know, cloud and enabling SaaS components are powering the SaaSification of everything. And the barrier to entry to create a software company is lower than ever before. And we're seeing a rapid rise in business applications, not just infrastructure. There are more vertical and user-centric persona-specific software companies than ever before. And buying centers continue to shift, empowering more line of business users to buy versus everything being centralized to procurement and IT. And what that's doing is driving massive budget expansion. You know, the cloud budgets of the three hyperscalers are $100 billion, growing at an astounding 37% year over year. Gartner published that the enterprise software budget $675 billion, growing 10% year over year. Dollars are flowing to marketplaces at three to four times the cloud growth rate. And the project marketplace budgets are projected to hit $50 billion plus by 2025. All this means there's more dollars and buyers and ever available for builders solving problems. Digital transformation used to be about changing the way you ran data centers or built software, but we're seeing this elevation towards a software driven business, which is about buying enabling capabilities, building only differentiating capabilities and scaling with systems wherever possible. In a software driven business, people will complement software systems, not the other way around. I'm going to look at, make sure we're not missing any questions, some chat along the way. All right. So in a world, software-driven business world, why is it still so hard to buy and sell software? So buyer expectations, and I went through a couple of these stats on the slide before, but the main reason buyer behavior is changing. And I like this Gartner stat that states that 80% of sales interactions will happen via digital channels by 2025. And they expand on this even further to talk about how today, 33% of buyers desire a sales experience with zero seller interaction. And when you look at how most go-to-market systems are built today, they're not built for this future world. Scale, so go-to-market systems look something like the following. And this image on the right, you know, highlights that great product is now table stakes, but great product alone will not fuel your growth. You need alignment with your sales organization, your marketing organization, your customer success organization, and your partner organization. You make these systems really hard. And every CEO can and likely does draw the up and to the right 
graph that shows a hundred percent year over year growth model. But executing on that is way more complicated than building them all. And most go to market systems lack the instrumentation and visibility to truly predict how fast and how efficiently you can scale. Winners and losers will be determined by their ability to use all available avenues and resources to drive product engagement, to deliver value to users, and ultimately translate that value into recurring revenue. Scale for software companies will come down to their ability to drive go to market. And when you look at how plans are built, they still start with this very simple people-based formula. What is your desired target ARR amount? How much comes from existing systems, you know, new revenue, renewal revenue, expansion revenue, minus churn? How much capacity needs to be added to get to your target? What's the average quota by each of these layers? What's the expected distribution of performance, percentage attainment by rep? And with that basic math, you can determine how many people you need to have to have a shot at making your plan. And typically you have to invest in, and I like this graph on the, on the right that shows, you have to invest in way more capacity than you may need if every one of your quota carrying salespeople was actually hitting plan. You, you then kind of double click into supporting capabilities on top of this people-based system. And that's marketing and partner customer success. But all of these usually come after the fact and worst case are completely disconnected. While this may not be the case for bottoms up user adoptable, adoptable products, the majority of B2B software is more complicated and follows some sort of planning process that looks like this. So it all starts with people. Once you have the people formula worked out, you start to think about systems like how, how can i how can i use software to make these people based systems better so here are the four tech stack images available for sales marketing partner and customer success software so there literally is a sea of tools available to try to help each of these sub segments of your go to market system attack problems that are inside their organization. But really it's about taking these individual organizations from being people-based systems to, you know, functioning subsystems. But go-to-market is no longer single faceted. If you start viewing your go-to-market system as a truly integrated system, most of these tools actually don't work together. There are some platform oriented tools designed to be the all-in-one solution for go-to-market. But those were primarily built for the direct selling and people-based era. These tools break down when you start to think about product-like growth or multi-marketplaces or really doing deep instrumentation of your go-to-market systems. And if you're investing heavily in scaling your go-to-market system, you likely are frustrated by how difficult it is to get an integrated view and how hard it is to answer questions about your investments as well as the potential outcomes. Progress is being made to increase visibility, but as that progress is made, go-to-market systems get more complicated. And it's almost like you take one step forward to take two steps back. We need to shift to an era where technology enabling go-to-market systems are built for change and are not static and hard-coded. They need to be rethought for this era of digital selling for multi-channel marketplace commerce. And it's funny, I was talking to a software company and they were talking about releasing a new product. And the biggest barrier was not building the product. It was figuring out how they could actually take it to market. The process to update their coding system was measured in months. Uh, those are the kinds of barriers that we see these systems delay. I'm gonna take a peek and see, what, no questions so far, no banter either, banter's welcome. Uh, so, now that we have people-based systems and we have the software that tries to complement these people, the next level of complexity is in this rapidly expanding number of go-to-market functions. And go-to-market always starts simple in a company. But as you grow, you need to layer on more and more go-to-market motions to fuel your growth. We believe that's actually a really good thing on a long-term basis. 
all sellers will need to engage with buyers where and how they want to be engaged with. Some examples of these layers go to market motions include direct, digital, bottoms up, top down, multi product, multi package, multi marketplace. All of this adds complexity to the system. And most of the tools we talked about on the slide before do not support all of these available go to market motions. So, all up and to the right plans look great until reality strikes. And when you add it all up, go to market systems are the single most expensive part of every scaling software company. And they have not really been optimized. You end up paying for way more capacity than you might need. Tools are helping, but they still operate in too many silos. More go to market motions are, are power and growth, but this adds complexity. And as a student of cloud and infrastructure, it all feels a lot to me like the infrastructure value proposition pre cloud. If you think about before the cloud, you had to design for peak, you had to buy for peak and only use a fraction of what you pay for. The good news is we're starting to see this change. So there is a question. Do you think infrastructure products that are sold in a recurring revenue model like SaaS can be sold in a marketplace? Something like line data center solutions. Uh, yes, I, I do think um, in that SaaSification of everything, you know, marketplaces can be a complement to much more complicated products. It doesn't have to be always auto deployable. Uh, there's probably there's a lot of nuances to that question. The short answer is yes. And the tackle team definitely is available to help you kind of unscramble your current product offering. Look at how you sell, look at how you want to sell, and then align that to marketplace in the way that makes the most sense. Thanks for the question, Matt. All right. So in 10 years, go-to-market systems are going to look very, very different. And you know, we talk about all the complexity, all the layers, people, systems, but I love this simple image that's from our friends at KOTU, as I think it pretty accurately describes where most companies are today. Everyone is thinking about their product and how their product is central to your go-to-market value proposition. Most people have nailed one of the two big go-to-market motions, meaning either they start with enterprise direct selling, or they start with some sort of bottoms up motion. Once you get one of those two motions working, oftentimes you immediately try to figure out how do I get the other one working? And from there, you start experimenting with additional pathways that complement both enterprise sales and bottoms up. A lot of times today that looks like cloud marketplaces. In the future, go to market systems will be software driven and complemented by people and not the other way around. Like this is a huge change over the next 10 years. In the future, all buyers will look to engage digitally. And that means sellers will have to help buyers buy via the path of least resistance, likely multi-marketplace, likely multi-channel e-commerce. Processes will be driven via digital experiences enabling much more granular instrumentation and real-time communication. If you compare the level of instrumentation in a product and engineering system to the level of instrumentation in your go-to-market system, product and engineering systems are 10 times more instrumented. That's, the, that's what I think about in the future. 10 years from now, how do we have that level of visibility in the way that people are interacting with our go-to-market system that works much more like a product and engineering system. And lastly, this, this will enable a form of evolution that looks much more like consumer grade e-commerce experience for buying and selling software. So it's really early though. For B2B. And I wanted to take a step and I, we, we spend time thinking about what's happening in consumer e-commerce and just the, the nuances and differences as it relates to business to business. And I thought this stat, which was recently published by Stripe, was pretty, pretty telling. You know, we've been at consumer e-commerce for 25 years and still only 12 percent 
of retail commerce is online. 88% is offline. And as we look at our customers, you know, some of our best customers are operating with 20 to 30% of their revenue flowing through marketplaces, 20 to 30% being online and digital. And we've seen some startups make the choice to say, I'm going to build my company marketplace native, and they drive 75% plus of their revenue online. But when you look at B2B holistically, B2B software holistically, we are in the single digit percentage points of adoption of digital selling. And we're starting to see more companies actively measure the percentage of their revenue that flows digitally versus direct. And I think that's a good signal for the future. So I love the slide from our friends at OpenView. And we added a new emerging layer to it to represent this digital selling future called the cloud go-to-market era. You know, clouds are elastic. They're built for change. They enable you to pay for the value you receive and eliminate barriers to entry. We believe all of these principles apply in this digital selling revolution that we're all part of. In this era of buying and selling, sellers embrace the best of all prior go-to-market eras, but complement them more with consumer-grade concepts. In this cloud go-to-market era, SaaS will be the default deployment method for all software, but it will need to complement the infrastructure that buyers use. Buyers will be anywhere in all functions, not just enterprise, but user-based buyers as well. And you'll need the business models to support both types of consumption. That means your pricing will have to be much, much more flexible to meet the buyer persona, and you'll likely have more products and more packages to meet their consumption models. And lastly, you'll need to meet buyers where they wanna buy and that's going to be online, that's going to be marketplaces, that will still be direct. And you'll need to be world-class at all of them. The cloud go-to-market era embraces all of the best, and we all need to work to be world-class at them all. In the future, humans will complement a software-based go-to-market system and not the other way around. And we're seeing some major signals of this transformation. And I, I like these four examples. First being product-led growth. It, you can't spend five minutes on Twitter and not run into a conversation about product-led growth. Usage-based pricing oftentimes goes along with product-led growth concepts. The rise of marketplaces. I mean, if you think about in our consumer lives, if we had to have a direct relationship with every company that we, we buy from as a consumer, we would have thousands and thousands of relationships. You go to a grocery store for a reason. You go to Amazon for a reason. Like that's the same evolution that's happening in B2B right now. And it's really just changing the nature of that buyer experience. And then buyers are demanding a different way of engaging. They're demanding more digital experiences. We're still in the earliest days of this transformation, but I am personally really excited about this event event as we brought together a group of thought leaders from many different vantage points to learn from their early successes and help the broader isv ecosystem embrace the cloud go-to-market era and i, I want to thank everyone for being here really appreciate you taking the time to join us